So our discussants are going to remain seated, but um, go ahead, please. Quick conference with the discussants. We agreed we'd sit here and do this. Um, so, good morning. I am uh, here from the Council on Education for Public Health, and we are the um, accrediting body for schools and programs in public health established about 45 years ago um, as an independent accrediting body recognized by the United States Department of Education. Um, and we accredit um, public health uh, training programs from baccalaureate level to the doctoral level. Currently, um, when we were established and um, in, the, uh, in 1974, we accredited 10 schools of public health. So currently, we, we accredit 200 units, so 66 schools of public health, 121 public health programs, and then a new category I'll talk about a little bit um, is the, uh, we have 13 standalone baccalaureate programs. So those are baccalaureate programs in public health that are not affiliated with graduate education in public health. So um, I'm heartened, actually, to hear uh, Brian and Kalpana's um, presentations because I think that I'm excited to share with you a couple of um, transformations that we've made over the last decade um, in public health education and training, and I feel like they align really well with some of the needs that have been um, identified. So um, the first one that I want to share with you is undergraduate accreditation in public health. So we were hearing uh, over and over that not all places can, um, for various reasons, and particularly local health departments in more underserved areas, um, can hire master's trained individuals in public health. And so we worked uh, hard for a number of years to really identify what a bachelor's degree in public health looked like. And of course, at the same time, those program offerings were just spiking um, all across the United States. Students were flocking to them, they were very interested in undergraduate training in public health. Um, while we have the standalone baccalaureate category um, in total, affiliated with graduate programs and without, we accredit 79 um, undergraduate programs in public health at this point. So, um, and, and it's growing um, really astronomically. Their curriculum, absolutely, the required curriculum incorporates concepts of population health. And in fact, we call it out specifically. They um, are required to uh, be uh, educated in nine domains. One of them is concepts of population health, including basic processes, approaches, interventions um, that identify and address major health needs and concerns. Um, data collection and analysis, planning and assessment and evaluation. So, and I included in the, in in the reading um, references are criteria so that you can actually read the wording of all of those. But that's one um, really important innovation, I think. The, the second, um, some of you may know that um, back in 1915, the Welsh Rose Report um, sort of laid out the philosophy and structure of the MPH degree, and it changed very little over the next century. So um, what we did is, uh, based on a whole lot of feedback, looking at the literature, including things from the Council on Linkages Competencies, the Public Health Wind Survey, um, and, and other other uh, surveys and, and literature, we completely transformed what was expected um, in terms of public health education at the master's level. So if any of you have an MPH, you took the five core courses, right? So you took Epi, Biostats, Health Services Administration, Environmental Health, and Social and Behavioral Sciences, taught in a very disciplinary manner, um, and really not connected to anything else. So that's not acceptable anymore, um, and our uh, programs now are addressing as their core, what we call foundation, 22 competencies in eight domains. Um, and those eight domains, again, you'll find this in the, the references, are infused with population health and infused with social determinants of health. Running throughout are the ideas of cultural competency. Um, but the domains, not the competencies, are evidence-based approaches that includes data collection, analysis, interpretation, um, public health and healthcare systems, planning and management, including budgeting and finance, uh, policy um, leadership, including visioning, strategic planning, negotiation and mediation, communication, uh, both oral and, and uh, written, interprofessional practice, and systems thinking. And so that is now the foundation um, or the core of, of MPH level training. And what we found um, is that we know, we, we know that this is a transformation because we're tracking this, but what we found is that 84% 
of our public health schools and programs have actually changed that core. So some of them, 16% have actually kept the five core courses and changed the content within them, but the other 84% have either uh, changed the, the, the classes, the way that they're structured, added classes, including introduction to public health, believe it or not, um, many weren't taking that at all, um, <laughs> program planning and evaluation, leadership and communication, research methods. Um, and many just completely created a new core. So we're seeing a lot of innovative models and, and those were the, the couple of transformations I wanted to let you know about. I'm happy to take any questions after.